What's up, guys? Um, as you all know, that 2016 Rio Olympics is going on right now in Brazil. And most of you don't know that I'm an Olympian. I represented my country at the 96 Olympics in Atlanta in weightlifting. So my background is Olympic weightlifting. So in this video, I'm going to be taking you on a little journey about my Olympic experience, Olympic dream, and Olympic training. I'll be showing you some um, Olympic lifting disciplines. I'll be showing you the snatch and the clean and jerk. And this is my foundation. This is what I did way before I thought about bodybuilding. So come along with me and share this journey with me. So today, um, I'm not going to be showing you any bodybuilding movement. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to be showing any technical stuff when it comes to building muscle. Today is about um, knowing about what I went through um, to get to this level and uh, my past history with Olympic weightlifting. Um, for me, Olympic weightlifting is, my, in my opinion, the most dynamic move in all of sport. Um, when it comes to Olympic weightlifting, you have to have speed, you have to have power, you have to have um, explosiveness, you have to be quick, flexibility, agility, um, reflex, and timing as well. So um, if you play any other sport, um, Olympic weightlifting is a great way um, to, to use that kind of movement to help you excel in your sport. So it's all started for me uh, way back then in my country. I'm, I'm originally from Nigeria. Um, the first time I saw pumping iron on TV, I thought pumping iron was Olympic lifting, not knowing about pumping iron is bodybuilding. So I saw these guys on stage flexing their muscle, lifting weights, whatever it is, and I'm like, well, I want to look like those guys. I want to be those guys. So I was so excited to start working out, to start training, but unfortunately, I looked around. I grew up in a small little town. Um, we don't have any gym around there, so there was no gym around. There was no way for me to go lift, train, build muscle, and be like those guys in pumping iron. But um, I just couldn't stop thinking about lifting weights. So what I did one day was I uh, walked around the whole, in the whole neighborhood. I found a few, you know, rusted bars, and I found some flywheels. So I was able to um, drag these flywheels home and, and started training with it. So eventually I learned how to do the shoulder press, the bench press, um, bicep curls, pull-ups, squats. And those are the only things I was doing then. So to make the long story short, I went to the mainland because I grew up in an island. I went to the mainland to the sport complex. I was introduced to the Olympic lifting coach and then he explained to me the difference between Olympic weightlifting and bodybuilding. So um, he said bodybuilding is just aesthetics. You know, there's no athletic ability. You don't have to have any athletic ability to be a bodybuilder. You know, all you do is isolation movement. But Olympic weightlifting on the other side, you have to be very, very athletic. You have to be quick, you have to be explosive, you have to have balance, you have to have rhythm, um, you have to have flexibility. So I started Olympic weightlifting, I think if I can think back now at the age of 12, um, trained for a long time, eventually became the state champion, I was, became the national champion. Then I rep went to um, represent my country for the very first time in the All-African Games in Egypt. And um, as I was stepping on stage on the platform for my second attempt, I think it was about, um, if I can remember, 130 kilos. And at that time, I probably weighed only about, close to about 60 kilos. So as I snatched the weight, went under the weight, lost my grip to the end of the bar, and snapped my elbow in half. And this, I had this injury, which really kind of like set me back a little bit. And I had the injury for a while, was able to recover, came back, you know, then I went for the 92 Olympic trials. And when I was, you know, coming out for my last attempt in the snatch, I had the same injury again. So, you know, this injury sidelined me for almost four years, but I wasn't willing to give up because I have a dream and my Olympic dream is not over until I make it to the Olympics. Um, I don't know what you guys, all, all you guys are going on out there uh, about achieving your dreams, uh, achieving your goals. I'm sure there are people that have told you you can't do something just because you don't look the part or because you so-called don't have the genetic to, um, to be whatever you want to be or whoever you want to be. Um, when I first talked to my friends about, you know, going to the Olympics, they all laughed at me because back then I was so little, so skinny to the point that 
my nickname back then was Bones. They called me Bones because I was so skinny. And they're like, how can somebody, someone this skinny become an Olympic weightlifter? You know, I was injury prone. But I refused to allow somebody to tell me what I can and cannot do. So I put in the work, trained harder, um, represented my country in the, uh, I think, 94 Commonwealth Games in, in British Columbia, Canada. I won two gold and a bronze. And my Olympic trim was still was not completed yet. While I was getting ready for the Olympic trials um, for the 96 Olympics, I dislocated my hip. You know, so taking all this risk, sometimes we do go through some downfalls, we do go through some, some failures, but all, those things only make you stronger if you keep pushing. So when I dislocated my hips, and the doctors told me you had to do two dislocated elbows, now you have a dislocated hip, I think it's time for you to quit Olympic lifting. And when they told me this, I was really kind of depressed in a way. But I kept telling myself that, you know, if I can push through and, and, and believe in my dreams and never give up no matter what, because sometimes when we go through stuff along the way, we stumble. But when you stumble, the best thing for you is not stay down. The best thing for you is to come up and stand up and keep fighting. So I kept I came back, you know, recovered 100%, came back, trained hard. That's when I made the 96 Olympic, uh, Olympic team. So walking out on that track during the opening ceremony, I mean, it is a feeling up till today that I can't even tell you how it feels until you experience it yourself. So no matter what you guys are going through, no matter what the failure has been in the past, no matter what the pain is, if you're willing to work hard and believe and have faith in your work and believe that you know what you ought to be, you are now becoming. So you have to have that power of imagination that you have to go way into the future. It could be two years, three years, four years, five years into the future. Be what you want to be. Feel what it feels like to be that thing. And then come back to the present day time and work hard. So when something happens along the way, it could be an injury, it could be uh, emotional stuff or a family situation happening, you tell yourself, no matter what's happening right now physically, you felt what it felt like emotionally, mentally, to be there, to achieve that goal. So nothing can happen right now that can stop you from achieving that goal. So whatever it is, don't give up. And there's a saying that I love saying all the time, I always say this to my clients, is that those who take the risk of going too far will find out how far you can go. So if you don't take the risk of pushing yourself beyond your comfort zone, you will never grow. I believe that nothing grows in the comfort zone. The more you make yourself uncomfortable, I think the more your body progress forward. If you are comfortable and you want to achieve a goal, I, I, don't, I don't believe that goal will ever happen. You have to push beyond what your body can handle. That's when your body shifts. So that's my Olympic dream. That's my Olympic journey. And I hope all this little word that I've given you guys today, is, I've been able to inspire you to go for your dreams no matter what. So I'm going to show you a few disciplines um, in the Olympic lifting movement. There's one called the snatch, which goes from the bottom to the top. And the other one is called the clean and jerk. You drag the weight from the bottom to your shoulder and you drive it straight up onto the top. So before I show you a few of the snatch and the clean and jerk, I'm going to do a few warm ups. This is what we call box, box jumps. It's just to help the legs active a little bit more, give you a little bit more explosive movement when you're doing the movement. So I'm going to come over here, stand behind the box. I'm going to go into a squat and explode up, back down, up, sit, up, one more, so basically the box jump is to help you mimic the explosive movement from your lower body so you can be able to be more stable when you come down on the, on the bar. So as you guys can see, I'm jumping straight up and landing a little harder. So when I come under the bar, I'm gonna maintain the same form and the same rhythm. All right guys, if you've never seen this snatch before, I'm gonna show you what the snatch looks like. For me, in my opinion, like I said earlier, the snatch is the most athletic move in sport. You gotta be complete. You have to have speed, power, explosiveness, flexibility, agility, rhythm, reflex, everything put together. So I'm gonna step behind the bar. So we take a wider grip on the bar. So in Olympic weightlifting, we use what is called the hook grip. 
normally when people do bodybuilding movement, the bench press, they grip this way. So in Olympic weightlifting, we use something called the hook grip. The reason why we use the hook grip is because it's, it secures the bar. So when you grip the bar from the floor, it will loosen up. So this is more like a lock grip. So I'm gonna step over the bar. I'm gonna take a wider grip from the bottom. Chest high. Back down. Chest high, pull. Do one more. As you guys can see, that is an explosive, powerful move. This is the reason why most sports, even all sports, are using Olympic weightlifting as one of the main training program to help them excel in their sports. So there you have it, Snatch, most dynamic move in sports. All right guys, I'm gonna show you the next discipline, which is the clean and jerk. The clean and jerk, I would say, is like playing around with a deadlift into a reverse curl, which is not a reverse curl, into a shoulder press. But this one is more dynamic. You gotta get your hips under the bar after your full extension, stays on your shoulders, and then you drive from your hips, from your lower body, and make sure your hips and your shoulders stays under the bar. This is what it looks like. So in this clean and jerk, your grip is more narrow. So you stay under the bar, chest high. Now that's what the cleaning jerk looks like. It looks very, very violent, but it's more speed and power under control. For me, I felt like being an athlete at the gymnastics track and field, play basketball for a little while. And what allowed me to be more explosive in all these other sports I played is because of the foundation I had in Olympic weightlifting. And one thing I like about Olympic weightlifting is, as you guys can see, I only did one rep. My heart rate is going bananas right now. So if you want to get your heart rate, up, heart rate up a little bit, maybe get some metabolic training going on. If you don't really want to waste your time on the treadmill, you know, if you don't have time, you don't have 30 minutes or maybe an hour to waste in the gym, just learn a simple, simple Olympic lifting movement. And one thing about Olympic weightlifting is that you cannot learn it by watching a video or reading a book. This is very important. Make sure you get an expert. Make sure you get someone that knows what they're doing so that it will help you teach you the proper form and proper technique. Because if you don't learn the, learn the proper form and technique about Olympic weightlifting, you might end up injuring yourself. So this is what I do. Back then, I, what I used to do back then, I'm a bodybuilder now, but I still go back every now and then, play around Olympic weightlifting because it keeps you more athletic, it keeps you more dynamic, it helps you understand your body, it helps you understand the flow of your body, it gives you more control. So try Olympic weightlifting now, add that to your training regimen and see how that's gonna help you. So thank you all for watching this video. Um, and I appreciate all the likes and comments on my YouTube channel. Once again, if you want to know everything about all this program, go to MiamiMuscleUSA.com and sign up. Until then, I'm out. Thank you.